Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to Bariatric Foodie Live, where Shannon and I are both very cold. We are. It's freezing. <laughs> you might notice that we, I have on my hat. Shannon has on her hat. I can't decide whose hat is cuter, but Shannon has her little gloves on. I don't have gloves on, right. but we're both very cold. This is a very common thing after weight loss surgery. You lose your insulation and you're like cold all of the I was cold in my office. Mm -hmm. I'm cold in my house. We have heat. Look. I was, look. It's just cold. And so hi, yeah. Oh gosh. Oh, I have the I have the ones that are like little like black and white raccoons. Yes. Oh yes. So, anyway. My son, my son bought me two pair. He bought me these and the unicorn ones, but the mm -hmm. unicorn ones were too small. And they didn't have any more at the store. So I was sad. I had to return them and get different ones. But oh, I really I wanted yeah. raccoon. I had raccoon. I wanted it's unicorn like a, a gray one. Yeah. So <laughs> we have that. Yes. We're freezing. It's cold. We are frozen like Elsa. Oh, right. <laughs> Let it go. And then Shannon. Okay. <laughs> I don't want the show to run. I'm really trying to like keep the show concise. But we almost lost Shannon this week, guys. <laughs> Trina gave me like the scare <laughs> of a lifetime this week. Mm -hmm. Okay, like in just a couple of sentences, can you please tell our, our fellow foodies what happened? Well, I rang in the new year with a car accident. It wasn't bad. Um, uh, Another driver merged into my lane where I was, and uh, we collided, and that car went spinning one way, my car went careening another, and I hit the guard the guardrail on the far right of the road, and um, the other vehicle hit a concrete median. Nobody was hurt. She she had airbags deployed and, you know, all of that stuff. Um, but she was checked out and then walked back to the car that her parents came and got her. And I was fine. I, I, had, I was checked out and released. And so um, now we're just kind of doing the insurance dance thing. But, yeah, it was pretty freaky. I did drive for the first time today. Um, since my accident, it was a little creepy. I was a little bit skittish, but I made it. I, I, I just don't know. Shannon told me this, and I like freaked out. I was like, "What's the matter? Ha -ha! <laughs> you can't leave me!" I know. Oh, yeah. I was I, not. It was not. Mm -mm. It was. It was. It was a little bit nerve wracking for me. So I'm very I, over Shannon, guys. I know, right? I love to. I I love that. So, <sighs> thank you. Thank you for being so protective of me. Okay. Right. Anyway, moving right along. I need to move past this trauma. Okay, let's, let's go on. Let's, Let, let's leave it behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this show, Forever and Always, well, not Forever and For Always, but for right now, is sponsored by BariatricPal.com. Your friend in bariatrics is like the Amazon of bariatrics. You can just find every product ever. But right now, through to actually through tomorrow, um, Bariatric Pal is having a special sale that they want you to know about which is that you can get 20% off of Bariatric Pal brand warm drinks, soups, and pasta. I think it's like um, um, protein pasta or something like right. that. Um, uh, uh, I hope. Anyway, with code STAYWARM20. STAYWARM20. And to get that, you would go to store.bariatricpal.com. Bobby Joe is having trouble seeing us. Sometimes you have to just completely close out. Shannon, do you have the live on the other screen or no? I do not. Okay, well, I don't know. We might be frozen, like Elsa. Let me check. But um, <laughs> guys, if you could chime in if you're seeing us. I mean, I might be a little glitchy because, like I said, my internet is a struggle these days. Comcast, you need to do better. Um, but yeah, Bobby Joe is having a hard time, and you know we have that no foodie left behind. Thing. So if it's anything more than me looking like Max Headroom, then it, th there might be something going on here. So I don't know. Okay, Fran sees us. Okay. We have Fran. Oh, thank God, Fran. We needed you. 
We yeah. needed you here tonight, Fran. Anyway, well, moving right along while Shannon is, is, is doing what she's doing and Fran is, is looking at us. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so store.bariatricpal.com. One more piece of business before we hop into uh, what we're gonna talk to you about tonight is um, that you can subscribe to get Bariatric Foodie Live updates um, by going to bariatricfoodie.com forward slash live. And when you go there, you can fill out a little form and we will email you each week to remind you that Bariatric Foodie Live is happening and you'll even get to know ahead of time what the show is gonna be about so that you can decide if you can spend those 45 to 157 minutes, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, that you can, of your life that you can never get back with us. And I don't think that was like a selling point. <laughs> I don't. Maybe not. Um, Bobby, I don't know if you can hear us and you just can't see us. It might be uh, a connection issue on, on your end. It might be, you know, you might need to X out of the live and come completely back in. If not, you might need to refresh your page. I'm not exactly sure. Sometimes yeah. it takes a little bit of finagling. Facebook is still tweaking this whole live broadcast thing. So yeah. bear with it. So anyway, tonight we are going to talk about the, the three words that we hear arguably the most throughout the year on Bariatric Foodie. How do I get back on track? So getting back on track, what does that even mean? So Shannon and I were discussing, and I was honestly saying that I wish that we recorded the pre-show. We, we, both, we both log on like about 30, 45 minutes before the show to run through everything of what we're going to say. And we're just hilarious. We crack each other up <laughs> because <laughs> I was saying that I started out my post-op life Okay, so I was I, I got on the track, okay? I was on the track, right? And I started walking and then I started running and then I was like freaking elite runner. What what was that? What's that guy's name who was like the fastest man in the world? Uh whatever his name is. Um I was him. I was running across that track like somehow maybe I was running too fast and I went off the track. And so I went off the track. I could still see the track, so I made my way back to the track, but I didn't get back on the track, guys. No, I stood on the side of the track and threw rocks at people on the track, <laughs> as opposed to getting back on the track. Nowadays, sometimes, you know, I'm on the track, but you know, sometimes I'm running, sometimes I'm walking, sometimes I'm jogging. I, I'm, I'm doing intervals on the track. What, what about you, Shannon? Well, I think I said that I got on the track and much like you, I was doing really well. I was on the track and then like, like I got hit, <laughs> like I got hit in an accident and I got turned around and then I started going backward. <laughs> <laughs> and there's all these like signs, you know, like wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Do not enter. <laughs> oh, no. Right. <laughs> no, Bobby, you know, it's, like, not the, it's not the bionic map. Usain Bolt. That's who it is. Usain I was Usain Bolt. Bolt. Right. For about four months on that track, I was Usain Bolt. Glo yep. Four glorious months. So anyway, now I'm spinning circles or something. I don't know. I don't know. We have a couple of people saying that it stopped working for them. I'm not sure what's oh. going on. I, it might be it might be the internet connection because right. we have snow and wind and God knows it's probably a miracle that the video even showed up in the first place. So right. if it is slow for you, I apologize. Uh, what did, let me see what Leisha said. Let me see. She said she was doing good. She hit 167, fell in love, and fell off track. Oh, girl, that'll do it, too. Uh -huh. These men, we love you. But y'all, mm -mm, no. So anyway, um, <laughs> um, so, so let's, first, before we talk about what being on track means, let's talk about what it doesn't mean, okay? Okay, because... As a population, we can just be a tiny bit extra when we go at something, okay? Mm -hmm. 
I love us for that. I love our perseverance. I love the enthusiasm that we go into things with, but sometimes we can be a little bit extra to our own detriment. So let's talk about a couple of things that getting back on track does not mean. Chime in if you have any particular strong thoughts about these things. Mm -hmm. Getting on back on track does not mean that you get to go back to being a newbie, okay? There's no time travel in weight loss surgery. And what I mean by that is that a lot of times I see folks whose very first step in trying to get back on track is to drastically reduce their caloric content. Like I'm going to eat 750 calories a day and I'm going to drink almost all protein shakes and then I'm going to eat like a two ounce meal. Okay, look. I'm 10 years post-op, okay? (laughs) Or I will be 10 years post-op. We'll talk about that in a minute. No, no, and no. You do not get to be a newbie again. Your stomach is not supposed to stay that small forever. Your stomach is supposed to accept more food over time. So, you know, doing that is not going to work to your benefit because it's not sustainable. It's not even healthy. So, you know, you don't get to go back to being a newbie. You were only a newbie once. That is not how you approach getting back on track. And most people, the interesting thing to me is that most people approach this by, oh, Maria, we're getting to that. Um, But most people approach this without ever consulting their medical team. Like you consulted your medical team when you felt like you needed help in losing weight, you needed the surgery, right? You consulted your medical team, your dietitian, all those people then no consultation and you decide you're going to put yourself on like some sort of crazy 750 calorie diet. Don't do that. Okay. That's not healthy. Number one, you should be working with your team. Number two is that just, just don't do that. That's very, that's disordered eating and you you don't, that's not how you need to do it. Okay. Okay. Promise me all like scouts honor. You will not try to do that. Like it's one thing if you are already eating, like, I don't know, but anyway, (laughs) <laughs> anyway, um, it does not mean that you go into hyper overdrive with your eating. Now, conversely, and we'll talk about this how, as it relates to activity in a minute, but I see people who are like, I am going to cut every carbohydrate out of my body, out of my di- di- diet, not body, diet, body, diet. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to say something and it just comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. That's not the way to go, guys. Your your body actually does need carbohydrates for for some very distinct functions, one of which is that it's easy energy for you to burn. So if you, you know, if you you're exercising, you're going to need some carbs to, to, you know, get some fuel in the tank. Um, Carbs are also the only source of fiber. So if you like going to the bathroom, cutting all carbs out. First of all, I don't even think it's possible to cut like all right. carbs out of your diet. But yeah. again, this harkens back to your dietitian, not nutritionist, Bobby Joe. I don't know. Maybe you can see a nutritionist. I don't know. There is a difference between dietitians and nutritionists. I think it's with the amount of schooling that they have. So most bariatric practices have dietitians. Go see your dietitian. Mm-hmm. They're there for you. Okay. And then last but not least, Maria is going to appreciate this one. This does not mean that you get to abuse yourself. A lot of people think the path to getting back on track comes through beating yourself up. Newsflash, it's just as wrong for you to be mean to you as it is for somebody else to be mean to you. It's not nice. It doesn't mean you being mean to you doesn't make you a nice person. It makes you a mean person because you're mean to yourself. It doesn't make you virtuous. It doesn't make you humble. It doesn't make you anything else but a person who is very mean to a person who does not deserve to be treated that way. Besides the fact that it's just not very like productive. It's like, dude, anything that I've ever been successful at, I've never been successful out of a negative cycle of emotion. It's like I've been successful at things when I'm winning at something, when I'm doing well at something, where I feel good about something, where I feel confident and affirmed about something. And then that creates a cycle of positivity that sort of fuels me on. I have never, ever, ever accomplished great things out of negative emotions. Never. I don't know about you guys, but never, ever, ever have I accomplished anything great 
out of negative emotions. It's always been on some level believing that I deserve better, believing I can do better, um, and surrounding myself with people who encourage me to do better. So there's that. So if getting back on track doesn't mean those things, what does it mean, Shannon? Doesn't that seem like a deep question? Yes. What does it mean? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So first thing it means is that you need to, like the very first thing that I tell folks to do is like reestablish your weight loss surgery habits. The chief of which being, and I'm going to sound like a broken record by the end of this episode, go to your freaking surgeon, your dietitian, your (laughs) primary care physician, a geriatrician, whoever it is that you see or saw to help you lose weight, go see that person. Tell them, and using not self-abusing language, because these are, oh, I messed it all up, and I've gone back to the beginning and my surgery didn't work, and I've just messed everything up. No, I am struggling. You are allowed to struggle. You're human, guys. You're human. Go and say you're struggling. Be honest about why you're struggling, and let people help you. That's what you do. So, um, let's talk about these weight loss surgery habits, shall we? Because, like, here's the thing. As people try to, like, go, like I said, they go to the route of trying to be the newbie again and eat virtually nothing and all protein and no carbs and no vegetables and no da-da-da-da-da. Or I see a lot of people try to do use some of the, the, the hacks that they used to use before we had surgery when they would go on, like, some sort of crazy crash diet and only eat, like, cabbage or something crazy like that. The weight loss surgery rules actually do work pretty well. So if you are unfamiliar with those basic rules, here they are. Protein first, drink your water, take your vitamins, move your butt. So let's talk about these. Protein first. A lot of people interpret that as protein shake. Here's the thing with protein shakes. Don't get me wrong, I still do protein drinks. Shannon says she she does protein drinks every morning. It's a part of my overall intake today, yes. Um, I, I posted this morning because I made myself a very good Mexican chocolate out of Periastral Protein One on sale at store.periastral.com. Anyway, um, I kind of slid that in there. Anyway, so, um, well, they sponsor the show, guys. I got to give them a shout out. But anyway, um, so, <laughs> so um, yeah, protein drinks are a part of my life. But, like, if I'm if I'm experiencing, like, hunger, 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 One of the first things I do is I look at what I'm eating. Most of the time I'm eating too much starchy crap. And yes, I need to eat more protein, but that doesn't necessarily translate to protein shakes for me. Why? Because protein shakes are something of a slider food. They, even though they contain a lot of protein and they hold you for a little while, it's going to go through you. It's a liquid. So it's like one of those things where, you know, you drink it, you feel full for a little while, and then you feel hungry probably sooner than you actually would had you eaten something like four ounces of chicken breast. Now, here's the thing that gets me about the chicken breast thing. People freak out that they can eat four ounces of chicken breast. Mm -hmm. Four ounces of chicken breast, if memory serves me correctly, you are welcome to Google this and challenge if I am wrong. But if memory serves me correctly, four ounces of chicken breast is like 130 to 140 calories on its own and like something like 30 grams of protein. Right. That's not something. Like, if you can eat a whole chicken breast, you've done something good for yourself, Mm -hmm. and you're not eating something that's going to contribute to massive amounts of weight gain. I mean, it would if you, like, covered the chicken breast in, like, certain things. True. But, you know, rather than make yourself, like, some sort of 400-calorie mega shake that's going to go through you too fast, some lean proteins. That's, like, honest, my hand to the sky, the best tip I can give you for controlling hunger if you can't get your hunger under control is to switch to firm proteins. Your proteins that you are eating might not be firm enough if you find yourself getting hungry too often. And Shannon and I were um, were uh, uh, talking earlier about, because we both love cottage cheese, mm-hmm. and together we brainstorm like the ultimate. Because I told her, I'm yes. now anybody who's followed this website for a while knows that I have always, almost always been vehemently opposed to uh, savory cottage cheese. 
And I but the other day I wanted some cottage cheese and I didn't want anything sweet. So I went over to Shannon's side. And I had a little <laughs> bit of cottage cheese mm-hmm. and I diced up some cucumbers and some tomatoes. Mm-hmm. I put a little salt and a little bit of everything bagel spice. Holy cow. You guys have been telling me about everything bagel spice for so long and it took me 57 years to try it. But where the heck has it been all of my life? I feel like I need to, I feel, I feel like I have a thing of Sriracha in my purse. I feel like I need a thing of everything bagel spice in my yes. purse. Yes. Just put it on everything. I'm going to put it on eggs. Yes. I'm going to put it on cottage cheese. I'm going to melt a piece of chocolate and put it on there. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> maybe that's going a little bit too far. But yes. Maybe. So when you go, when, if you if you experience that you think you're eating too much, or, you know, you're getting hungry too often. Try those firm proteins because they're probably going to hold you longer. They take longer to digest. They're not slider foods. They take a little while to come out of your pouch, your sleeve, your stomach, whatever you call it. Um, and it's going to keep you satisfied a little bit longer. Don't get freaked out. That's the big thing that I had to learn how to do um, is to not get freaked out. Because when I'm first like sort of switching from acting a damn fool with my eating, to, you know, getting back on track. I am hungrier than normal. And so I just left, I let myself eat as much as I want to. It just has to be above the top. It has to be vegetables. It has to be lean proteins. It has to be stuff like that. What am I doing? Oh, gosh. I picked up something on the table and then it turned out to be hot sauce and then there was hot sauce on the outside of it. So now my hand smells like hot sauce. Great. Now I want a chicken wing. Anyway, (laughs) so that's the protein first. As you can see, my show is full of digression. Mm-hmm. Um, drinking your water. Pop quiz, guys. How much water is recommended for daily intake? How much water should we, should we ideally be drinking every day? Chime in. We'll wait. See, you know, when we practiced this, we were singing Stevie Wonder, though. Yes, we were. No New Year's Day to celebrate. No chocolate cover candy hearts to give away. And then I think that was like the point where I admitted I didn't know the next three lines of the song. Yes. But then we skip to, I just called to say, I love you. I just called. We got some answers now. They're like, God, please stop. We want to please make him stop. To stop <laughs> please make him stop. <laughs> okay, so th- for those of you who said 72 ounces, you are correct. The 64 actually hasn't been in play for a couple years now. I don't want you to freak out because that's like sort of an ideal, Mm -hmm. but knowing how much water you're supposed to get is half the battle, guys. Drink your water. Now, here's the thing that I see people do that's interesting to me is that they will like try to drink everything, but it's like, well, if I drink enough coffee, it's going to become water eventually. (laughs) Coffee is great. I love coffee, but you do need water. And you need water for several different functions, many different functions. There are numerous functions in your life you need coffee. I mean, not coffee. Mm. <laughs> water. See, look, y'all corrupted me. Um, so <laughs> you need water for, um, you know, water helps you, well, number one, hydrating your body just so you live and, you know, like don't die and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you need water to release water weight because we all carry water weight. Um, you need water to metabolize fat. Yeah. So water is a very important thing. Drink your water. Taking your vitamins, that, that goes without saying. We know why we should take our vitamins, right? But we don't have to go into that lecture. We're going to have somebody come give you that lecture in uh, a couple of weeks. But, but for right now, you just know about taking your vitamins. And then moving your butt. We're going to talk about moving your butt in a minute. But you know, a lot of people um, try to do like just the just the eating less without moving more. And, you know, the two things work in tandem. 
You need to move your body, not just for the sake of weight loss, but because it's actually good for your body. It's good for your heart. It's good for This is not just all about being skinny. Believe me, I spent my first four years, four or five years of post-op life endeavoring to look like Beyonce, okay? I get that you want to look good, but you also want this body to carry you through to life. I also, I would like to live to be 100 personally. I would be awesome. I was telling Shannon before the show, because you know who looks really good is Jane Fonda. And Jane Fonda is like, if she's not 80, she's 70 some. And Jane Fonda is like hot. If I look like Jane Fonda when I was in in, in Jane Fonda's current age, I just wouldn't put any clothes on ever. I'd be like, look, I look like Jane Fonda. Y'all need to calm down. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I want my body to carry me through a long life. I want to meet my grandchildren. I want to meet my great grandchildren. Maybe even my great great grandchildren. My my children got to meet their great great grandmother. That was very very special. So move your butt. Mm-hmm. We haven't even got halfway through this list, Shane and Lord. We're terrible. Yes. Anyway, so so another thing I want to encourage you guys to do: take a look at your environment when you're trying to get back on track, and that doesn't just mean your house. That means anywhere where you exist, your car your job, your route home from work, are these things all set up so that you are more inclined to do the right thing? And let me tell you what I mean by that, dear foodies. Just by nature, humans are kind of lazy. We're just a lazy species. Uh, Our laziness has created ingenuity, biological ingenuity that has made us the dominant species. So it it must be working for us so far the last million or so years. But inherently, we are lazy. So how that plays out is that if we want to do the right thing, it's much easier to do the right thing, the quote unquote right thing, when the right thing is easier to do than the wrong thing. If the wrong thing is way more inconvenient and harder to do than the right thing, then you're going to do the right thing. I hope that made sense. So things like, oh, I have an example that's coming up later, so I don't want to spoil it. But let's just go with, let's just leave it at that thought. You want to make the right thing to do the easier, more convenient thing to do. We'll give an example in a minute, or at least not super duper hard so that you can make that choice and there's not 18 million hurdles in front of you for doing the right thing and then like zero hurdles for doing the wrong thing is basically what I'm saying. So make sure that your environment is set up that way. Make sure your environment is set up so that you can make healthy food choices. Make sure your environment is set up so that you can drink water. Did you guys see on that episode of Bariatric Foodie Live some months ago that hula thing that I had on my water bottle? That's a good example of setting up your environment so that doing the right thing is like easier or more convenient because my coworkers hate that ula. I keep it at work. And the thing, it'll, it's, it's like this band. They, they make water bottles that do this same thing, but it's this band that has a thing that looks almost like a pedometer and it has a little light and the light will flash if you haven't taken a sip out of your water bottle for half an hour. And if you don't take, if you, at that point, if you don't, if you take a sip, it'll like stop blinking until another half hour has passed. Uh, when you haven't drank. But if you still don't drink, the thing will spaz out. It's like strobe lighting, like do, 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 do. And so that happens more than I care to admit. And my coworkers helpfully remind me to drink water because my ULA is driving them crazy. So ULA, U-L-L-A. You can look it up. But like I said, there is, um, I think there's a water bottle. It's called HydroSpark. It does the same thing um, and even has an app. So um, anyway, <laughs> Moving right along. That's an that's an example of taking a look at your environment and seeing if it's conducive to you doing what it is that you think you're supposed to do. Next, look at your relationships. Are they helping you or are they hurting you? Now here's the thing. And Shannon, I'm not gonna say what I said in the pre-show because we were, okay. we both uh, the, our inner 12 year olds came out. I'm not gonna tell <laughs> about what I said. In the but When I say look at your relationships, if your relationships are not helping you, if they're working against your healthy processes, I'm not saying that you should divorce your husband for eating Oreos, Shannon, (laughs) in the bed, okay? I'm not saying that you should cut your best friend off because she likes to go for pizza and buffalo wings on the weekend. 
Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is you need to look at those relationships. And what you need to do is you need to articulate to the people in your life what you need from them in order to continue to practice your healthy habits in their presence. Because you don't want to cut them off, but you also don't want to be doing unhealthy crap while they're around. It's like people, you know, hanging out with certain people just always just leads to debauchery. <laughs> I have those people in my life too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, if you need your husband to stop eating the Oreos, Shannon, um, in <laughs> bed. <laughs> like, what the hell was the joke? In the it was, it was. I'm, not, I'm not saying it. Mm-mm. Anyway, so um, <laughs> uh, um, if you need your husband to stop doing that, you, you got to talk to him. If you need to go somewhere else, uh, sometimes on Friday nights, besides, you know, beer and buffalo wings, you need to tell your best friend that, you know, be accommodating. Sometimes we, you, they get to do the things that they want to do, but then sometimes they need to accommodate you as well. And sometimes you have to just have those hard conversations with them and let them know, look, I'm really trying here and I need your help. Okay, that's what I mean by builder. Don't be going and cutting people off talking about Nick told me to cut you off. Don't. Mm-mm. And the people, really the people in your life who you have relationships with, with who are who you have those conversations with, who still stick around and will accommodate you, are the people that you want to have in mm-hmm. in your sphere, right? Like, so you have a friend who eats wings and drinks beer on Friday nights and you tell them, hey, look, can we change it up a little bit or whatever? And they're like, oh, no, absolutely not. Well, maybe then then you reevaluate from there. But, you know, if if your relationships are important, as important to them as they are to you, those shouldn't be that hard of a conversation. That conversation shouldn't be that hard. Now, we have another Shannon on the on. Oh, I saw that. She said. Her coworkers try to feed her. They don't think she eat enough. You know, my coworkers do that too, because even as much as I brag about my pouch, I do actually eat way less than my non-op counterparts. And they're like, that's all you're going to eat. Yes, that's all I am going to eat. That's all I want to eat. That is all I'm going to eat. Please stop trying to feed me right. unless right. you want to see me puke. That usually shuts it down. Like you, you bring out, you play, you play the puke card. Mm-hmm. No complaints whatsoever. Nobody They're like, oh, never mind. Don't want the puke. Nope. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see the puke. No. Nope. Puke is awful. No. Nope. Hard pass. Let's move past puke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> build some accountability, folks. That's another thing. Getting back on track. Now, I've talked about this before. And if you did the end of year little email challenge that I did, you should have heard this concept from me. But accountability, I mainly talk about three forms of accountability. And I think any sort of thing that you can do to be accountable falls into one of these three categories. Category number one, accountability to yourself. That's just you, yourself. Uh, It's doing things like taking your measurements, taking your weight, uh, logging your food, things like that. You don't need anybody else to be in that accountability. Problem with doing that by itself is that it's really easy to cheat and you can just justify it away and, you know, not log or not measure or not weigh and start to delude yourself. The brain is very good at doing those types of things. So we have accountability type number two, which is accountability to someone else. That looks like an accountability buddy. And ideally an accountability buddy is a person who has a goal. They have a goal, you have a goal, you're helping them stay on track with their goal. They're helping you stay on track with your goal. The big thing is accountability uh, buddies, it's sort of like mentorship relationships. Mentorship, your mentor is not exactly your, always gonna be your friend. Your accountability buddy may be your friend, but in that role, it's not their job. Yeah. The, you know, that gossip buddy or the, you know, the person who's goofing off with you or whatever. It's their job to hold you to what they said you're going to do. So you need to make some agreements. How often are we going to check in with each other? Uh, what what are we going to report back to each other? What do we, what do I do if you completely go off the rails? What what do you respond well to? Do you want me to just give it to you straight? Do you, how, how, how are we going to handle those types of things? It's a very specific type of relationship. People try to treat accountability relationships just like buddy, buddy, huggy, huggy, type of relationship. 
No. Most effective accountability relationships are when the other person is empowered to tell you if you are either doing something destructive, something that's going to take you away from your goals, or things like that. And conversely, who are secure enough in themselves that even if you two are not moving at the same pace, if you're doing really well, they can tell you and encourage you and congratulate you. That's a good accountability buddy relationship. So, third type. <laughs> is accountability before many. And that means that you profess something that you're going to do or some sort of goal or whatever in front of other people, you maybe invite them to watch you achieve it or check back in with you. Sometimes that group of people also has their own set of goals. Sometimes they're just watching you. Um, either way is good. It depends on what it is that you're comfortable with and what you feel is most effective for you. We are gonna talk about uh, a pledge in a minute which is the ultimate accountability before many. It's accountability for before many on crack, but we're not there yet. So let's forge forward because yeah, yeah. Shannon and I have come up with a top five-ish that is so fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> top five-ish conventional and weird advice to help you avoid pitfalls of getting back on track because there's pitfalls. There's things, you know, you try to do the right thing and the universe throws some curveballs at you. They're like, okay, well, I'm just going to make uh, all, you know, uh, chocolate sundaes free. And you're like, oh, crap, I need a chocolate sundae. Right. So, yeah, the universe will do that. The universe is sucky like that. So let's talk about some common problems that we hear. This is not just us making it up. People mm -hmm. message us these common problems and some conventional and maybe some weird advice on how to solve it. Okay. Yeah. All right. You ready for this, Shannon? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do you it. ready? Problem. My family eats crap and it tempts me. Now, Shannon had a really good one for this one. What was yours, Shannon? So, so since I do a good majority of the, um, purchasing of food um i only buy the crap that i don't like <laughs> like yeah you so, can have your crap but it's like crap that right. i don't like that crap so i'm I not want it. it so i you know like it doesn't really tempt me but maybe you know like or maybe it's something that i could eat or i don't have to eat so usually i won't eat it because no, not Shannon, you gotta tell them the thing that you didn't okay. like that i was like I oh my god <laughs> so i said my example was that my kids love smarties they absolutely love them. And I'm not a big fan. So I we yeah. live for Smarties every, like, oh my God. I used to like, with the Smarties, I would, I had a method. I would like unwrap them mm -hmm. and then I would tilt my head back and then I would just let them all like domino into my mouth. And then I had like the little, like the, it was made out of the same thing as the Smarties, but the little Smartie bracelet. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be like, like, like this mm -hmm. until you didn't have any Smarties left. And yeah, you oh had the soggy elastic string on your wrist. Yeah, yeah, I remember those. I don't like them. I just don't. Um, they're not my favorite. I, I don't like choose... Twizzlers though. So it's like yeah, and those are another one that I'm not a big fan of. I, I'll you know like I can take them or leave them. You know what I mean? And you so usually I just leave them. But that's how I deal. Like okay, yeah, you guys want your your stuff i choose the stuff that you get to have and it's the stuff that i don't really want so that's how mm -hmm. you do that so yes <laughs> well my piece of advice is one that you guys have probably heard before which this is, is that in my kitchen anything that i'm not supposed to have is way up high in the cabinet or way down low in the in the cab like the lower cabinets everything at eye level i don't i call i call it the supermarket method Yep. Because supermarkets are very intentional about what's at eye level. Brands pay more for things to be at eye level because they know if it's at eye level, you're you're more likely to choose it. So everything at eye level is something that's an okay choice for me. Anything else, like literally, like do do you have do you have like a cabinet that's like above the refrigerator? Yep. That's where I keep all of the pasta in the house. And the thing about it is I keep massive amounts of crap on top. I would show you guys, but I'm afraid that moving the computer might make my internet connect worse. But like right now I have two cases of Bipro protein water stacked in front of that thing. So in order to even get to pasta, I have to take all that crap off the top of the refrigerator. First of all, I have to get a ladder 
Nope. I have to get on the ladder, take all that crap down, and then reach in there for the pasta. It's just not worth it. Nope. My kids want pasta. I'm like, you go get that pasta. I'm not getting that. You get the pasta. Pasta, the rice, all of that stuff is in there. I made I made the right thing to do. The easier thing to do. It's easier to just pick what's like right there, like whoop, mm-hmm. as opposed to getting on the ladder and doing the, the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, moving right along. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Problem. When I go out, I can't control myself. So Shannon and I's advice is actually in the same thread, mm-hmm. but Shannon's advice is a little bit more practical than mine. My advice has always been, and this is I, hand, to, hand to the sky, this is what I do, is when I'm going out to like a social situation, going out, you know, grown folk time, whatever, um, where, to a place or a party or whatever, where there's going to be a lot of food, there's going to be a lot of free form eating. I usually wear something that is fairly form fitting bordering on tight because when I'm wearing something that is form fitting bordering on tight if I take even one extra bite I feel it like I feel like my button is gonna pop and I'm just gonna like it really does affect how much I eat like I'm Shannon let me tell you but then Shannon came along and she said but if you don't want to, wait a minute, no. If you don't want to look like, yeah, tell, tell, tell what you said. If you don't want to look what? I said, if you didn't want to go out looking like a busted can of biscuits. <laughs> like, and I mean it from like the, the space in my heart where all the love is. Like some people are not as confident in their bodies. And so they don't maybe want to wear stuff that's so far. Yeah, I didn't I didn't take that as you throwing shade, Shannon. <laughs> yeah, I didn't so, take that. No, but that's where I that's what I'm thinking. Like myself. It's like, for you example, know I'm not as one, comfortable showing like my one, body. Like what that one time you did look like the Pillsbury biscuits, Nikki. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but but no. But anyway, so, what would you what would you alternately do? So my suggestion was you have this really fierce flowy top, but you put on your shapewear underneath and your Spanx and all yeah, of your, you know, okay. all of your stuff and that will give you that constriction so you can feel when you've had too much, but you don't feel like you look like you had too much to eat. Oh. So you can still always look like you you know like, but then you know. I might try it, you know. Yeah. I'm like a tight dress, low cut plunging top. Right. And I'm not. Open. So I had to figure out a way to make it me. So like, you know, I'm like, you know, Shannon knows me. I am like the extrovert to end all extroverts, okay? I am not like comfortable unless I am the center of attention. <laughs> Anybody who's ever been to OAC convention with me knows that. I'm like that person who, like, when, when the cha-cha slide comes on, because the DJ yeah. every year party plays the cha-cha slide. And I'm like, I'll show you how to do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm more inclined toward the tight outfit. Shannon is more inclined toward the space. Right. Moving on. You just, you just learned some ultra-personal stuff about us. I know, right? You can never tell anybody. All right. Next. Moving right along. Problem. I just need, I'm hardwired to finish my plate. Okay, first of all, we get it, okay? Because all of our moms did the same thing. I think that there was like this PSA that they showed our moms and they became moms. They had like some little Ethiopian child with the bloated belly and the fly on their eyeball. And they told us that if we, the moms, that if we didn't, they didn't make their children eat every morsel of food on their plate that this child was going to bite the dust. Mm -hmm. While I agree, like, believe me, I, during the daytime, I work for an organization that tackles global hunger. So I know global hunger is real, but your leftover, like pizza, taco, casserole, pizza, casserole, not pizza, pizza, casserole, your taco casserole, your leftover cottage cheese. It's not going to that little child in Ethiopia. They can't access that. What it can do is make you sick or cause you to overeat or stretch your stoma from eating too much. So you don't want to do that. So let's talk about a couple of methods. There's, there's the conventional methods, like using a smaller plate. And then what else, Shannon? Uh, uh, we said putting stuff on it that would make it unpalatable. So like your salt, 
pour an obscene yeah, like, amount of salt I'm or I'm pouring like a yeah. drink on it yeah. or covering napkins. it with napkins yep. yeah all of those Morning. things so we know all of those tips right okay those are good tips my tip which is way effective because to me i used to do the napkin i couldn't bring myself to do the salt or the or the water it's just like again it ties into that little kid in ethiopia mm-hmm. i couldn't do that so um <laughs> Um, So basically what I do is I keep a thing of sugar-free Altoid in my purse. And when you pop the sugar-free Altoid, look, one of two things happen. One is that for about 35, 45 minutes, everything you eat after that is going to taste nasty Mm -hmm. because they are just, they, they're not kidding when they say they are curiously strong mints. They are curiously strong mints. The second thing that happens, more subtle, I get very preoccupied with the fact that I can, like when I eat an Altoid, Shannon, Mm -hmm. I can feel like all 360 degrees of my eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Like I eat an Altoid and my nose flares out Mm -hmm. like this. And then my eyeball, I'm like. It's, yeah, it's the peppermint. Mm -hmm. And then like I start doing eye loop-de-loops like. Yep. Yes, because you can feel your eyes. You like, can feel it. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I can feel it. Yep. So yes, the, the Altoids work very well for me. I see folks um, chiming in smaller plates, smaller amounts. See, the thing with me is sometimes even the smaller amount, it's like I can take two or three bites of the smaller amount and be uh, satisfied, but I feel like I have to finish it because it's there. So even if I gave myself a four ounce portion, say the two ounces was all my stomach wanted, I'm still eating the four ounces because it's there. And then, but yeah. I pop the Altoid. Oh, and yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> did you see? Did you like, see that comment from Marianne? Oh, about drinking, drinking, drinking cold, cold water. water. Yes, or like after an Altoid. Drink, after an Altoid, yeah, like you you drink cold cold water and it like intensifies the the, I'm the feeling. I'm to do that because I'm the eyeball thing already trips right. me out. It's like right. <laughs> or you like breathe in really fast and. It makes it really, really cold. Yeah. Oh my gosh, no. Darn, darn Altoids. But don't drink for 30 minutes after you eat. Don't do that. Like a sm- but yeah, but in general, you know, I'm going to try it on a random Altoid. Right. I'm going right. to live broadcast this. <laughs> I'm going to be like, I can't. Only when you do that. I'm with you. Right. But I love it. Anyway. Um, this is called the Nikki singing when she really shouldn't episode. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, and this is one that we, we hear a lot, guys, mm-hmm. a lot. Problem. I just hate exercise. Yeah, Shannon's in the hate exercise. I'm not, a, I'm not an exercise. You know this. See, well, we're opposites in that respect. I actually do like exercises just for some ungodly reason, it's hard for me to talk myself into exercising. But once I'm there, I'm like, I feel great. Mm. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm not you like know, that. I'm not like sometimes that. it takes a little effort to get me there. But once I'm there, it's like, it's hard to get me to stop right. exercising once I start. Exercising. I don't want to go. And then once I'm there, I don't like it at all. <laughs> so you're just, the opposite of me. I'm totally opposite. It's okay. But okay. So what's your, what's your tip for this one, Shane? So I, I suggested that um, if you don't really like exercise, um, but you think like some people get in their heads that you like exercise is this one thing. And if you're like that, that's cool. But start out slow. Don't go gangbusters. Like don't go and say, okay, I'm going to go to the gym for three and a half hours and I'm going to lift the heaviest weight that I possibly can. And I'm going to run for three miles and because you're going to, you're not going to be able to sustain that. And you're going to hate the whole experience instead of maybe gradually getting to a place where you can um, have an exercise routine that you can, that you can tolerate, that you can, you know, maybe learn to enjoy. But if you just go at it, like, full force you're gonna burn yourself out so fast and so Balboa syndrome right it's just not right and you know like the other thing that I mentioned is that um the like we we've heard studies that that show uh, even the smallest amount of added exercise a week 
makes a big difference than not doing any at all. Mm-hmm. So you're not, you know, you're not able to go and work out for three hours because you just don't like it. But if you can make yourself go and walk for 25 minutes on the treadmill and, you know, do arms one day or whatever, then you're still getting the benefit of the exercise without pushing yourself to a limit that's not um, sustainable for you. Well, I'm going to highlight Anita's because Anita's point is, was my tip, Mm -hmm. which is if you don't like formal exercise, don't formal exercise, formal exercise, Mm -hmm. don't dance around your room in the underwear to Lady Gaga or for Mm -hmm. me, Bruno Mars, because I love Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. He's so short and delicious. Anyway, (laughs) dance around your room in your bedroom in your underwear Run after your kids in the yard, preferably not in your underwear. Take a nice walk outside. Again, preferably not in your underwear. Mother stuff. Um, You know, whatever it is that you like to do. I know plenty of post-ops who sustainably from minute one just committed to taking a good long walk, getting their 10,000 steps in every day and have lost the weight, have maintained the weight Mm -hmm. and were able to do just fine without doing the gym beast. So I have to think that there is some inherent value in just having a routine that you can be consistent with every single day that works for you. So start off that way. Eventually, you may want to try and, you know, get yourself do more formal exercise. But if you're not moving at all, start moving in whatever way you want to start moving. Play your Wii, your Xbox Connect, dance to the music, whatever ride your bike, whatever you want to do. But, you know, you can do leisure things that are active and that counts too. That's my tip for right there. So those are, those are unconventional and sometimes a little bit weird tips for getting back on track. Now, before we were talking about accountability before many. So we, we are about to go into a season of, like I said, accountability before many on crack. <laughs> Please raise your hand. And when I say raise your hand, just say me. <laughs> if you have already signed up for the Bariatric Foodie Pledge, people, it is time. It is time for the Bariatric Foodie Pledge, people. It is time. You have probably seen the posts. You have probably seen me talk about it. It is time. So what the hell is the Bariatric Foodie Pledge? Because some of you probably don't know what I'm talking about. The Bariatric Foodie Pledge, which uh, a bunch of people who are on this live who have chimed in have participated in. So I know that they will be able to, in the comments, give their own impression. But the Bariatric Foodie Pledge is a four-week goal setting and accountability challenge. And the premise of it is really simple. It's not simple to explain with words on paper, but it is very simple. Um, it starts on January 28th. So the pledge started, there's still time to sign up. We're signing up right now. It doesn't start yeah. until January 28th, Sunday, January 28th. But basically at the beginning of the week, you're going to make a goal and you're going to turn that goal in on the Bariatric Foodie website. You're actually going to I am going to do this, Nikki, right? You're going to Turn it in. All week long, you're going to work on your goal really hard. And there we have a private Facebook group set up for the pledge. You're going to talk to each other. We had a good time last year in the private Facebook uh, group. It was so good that people were really, really pissed at me for disbanding the group after the pledge. I'm going to tell you ahead of time, yes, the, the group does go away after the pledge. But we have a good time while we're there together, people. We do. Um, at the end of the week, you have to hold yourself accountable by reporting back and saying how you did. Again, you're turning that in on the website. You're saying, Nikki, here's how my goal went. And the thing about accountability is some days you're going to, some weeks you're going to achieve your goal, some weeks you're not. Um, And that's okay as long as you hold yourself accountable. And if you do that, if you make a goal at the beginning of the week and you hold yourself accountable at the end of the week, you are entered into a prize drawing for a prize pack. Five people are going to win a prize every single week. We have great sponsors. Right now, if you go to bariatricfoodie.com um, and you click under the pledge, it has a rundown of all the sponsors and all the prizes. But here's the thing. I've been waiting all my life to say this, Shannon. But wait, 
there's more. You know, there's a weekly prize drawing for making the goal at the beginning of the week and 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 being accountable at the end of the week. But then if you participate all four weeks, you are eligible to win what we call the winner takes all grand prize. And the winner takes all grand prize is just what it sounds like. It is one of everything that was given away in the preceding four weeks of the pledge. So you get every single prize. And if you've looked at the prize graphic for um, the pledge, we actually have one awesome bonus prize. Tarani is giving away 12 full-size bottles of sugar-free syrup. You are never going to have to buy sugar-free syrup. <laughs> I don't care if you like only like vanilla and you buy 12 vanilla, you want to get like a multi-pack of 12 different flavors. I don't care. Go crazy with it. You deserve it after working your goals for that long. But that is the Bariatric Foodie Pledge and you guys need to sign up. But there's another thing that's happening uh, uh, in the next couple of days, and this ties into the pledge. Follow me here on this one. You following me, Shannon? I am. Okay. So Monday is my 10-year surge anniversary. If you can believe it, I have survived 10 years as a post-op. I know. There were, ter- there were points where I really didn't think I was going to make it, Shannon. I was like, yeah. man, man, whatever. So I am very happy about this. I feel like this is a thing to celebrate. I feel like we need to do a giveaway. And so we are going to do a giveaway, Shannon. Okay, so let me tell you about this giveaway. I love to talk about the giveaways. You know, I debated whether, I always debate whether I should talk about the giveaway at the start of the show, but I feel like it's like this nugget, this jewel for those of you who hang in there with me to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. You guys are the loyal. You guys are like the ride or die bariatric foodie live type people. You deserve to know first about these (laughs) giveaways. But anyway, um, so the giveaway, what what am I giving away? Well, my friends over at Tarani, uh, I was talking to my 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 rep over at um, Tarani, and they really wanted to participate in this give in a giveaway for my ten year surge anniversary. Um, and so, for five, there's going to be five winners of this giveaway. Five. That's a lot. Um, and each of you are going to receive a couple of things. One is that you're going to receive a sampler pack of mini bottles of sugar free Tarani syrup, so you can try some different things possibly trying out what you might win in the winner takes all grand prize. Maybe, maybe, possibly. Okay, that's thing number one. Thing number two is that, you know, when I was talking to Alex over at Bariatric Pal, you know, he's like, wait, 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 wait. You can't just let Tarani be involved in the surgiversary giveaway. I want to be in the surgiversary giveaway. I want to be in the giveaway. So I said, okay, fine, you can be in the giveaway. What are you giving away? So he is going to, he added to the package a sampler pack of all of the flavors of Bariatric Pal Protein One. So I've been talking about Protein One. I've been raving about it. It's wonderful in mixed drinks. I've been Instagramming it like to the hilt. So the the five people who win this are going to get the Tarani. They're also going to get the Bariatric Pal Protein One sampler. But that is not all, Shannon. Mm-mm. So then I talk, you know, I talked to Tarani and I talked to Bariatric Kyle. So I'm like, wait a minute. I have stuff I can give away. I'm not giving away everybody else's stuff. I'm not giving away my stuff. I need to give away my stuff. I need to be in my own surge anniversary giveaways. My surge anniversary. Why am I not in this giveaway? So I am giving away. I got to outdo them. I'm giving away two things. Two things. Thing number one that I'm giving away is a copy of my book, The Bariatric Foodie Guide to Perfect Protein Shakes. Now, you may already have a copy of this book. If you have a copy of this book, I will give you a book that you don't have yet. But if you don't have a copy of this book, that's the book I'm getting because that, those are the books that I have on hand. I'm going to keep it real. So, so that's <laughs> number one. Number two is that um, some of you may have uh, seen on my website that I have a back on track toolkit. Um, And that's been there for a couple of years now. It's actually something that sells really, really good. It's only a couple bucks and it gives you some good tips and advice and challenges you to get back on track. Well, I have rewritten that back on track toolkit and it is going to come out in the next week or so. 
However, the five people who win are going to get a copy of it for free. It is fleshed out. It's a little bit longer. Um, it has uh, a, a little bit more sage advice from the couple of years that have passed since the last time I wrote uh, that back on track toolkit. So <laughs> going, this is going to be a great, because uh, let's recap, Shannon. You get the Tarani samplers. Mm -hmm. You get the protein one samplers. Mm -hmm. You get the bariatric foodie guide to per perfect protein shakes. Mm -hmm. And you get the back on track toolkit. Now let's talk about what you gotta do to win this prize. I'm gonna make it stupid simple. Mm -hmm. Like stupid simple. The only thing you have to do to get an entry into this contest is sign up for the pledge. So if you're already signed up for the pledge, guess what? You're already entered. However, if you want to increase your chances of winning, you can earn some extra chances by sharing the pledge sign up link. Okay, so this is how this is going to work. The pledge sign up link is www.bariatricfoodie.com forward slash take the pledge. You will get one extra chance for every two places that you share this link. Now, how are you going to let me know that you have shared this link? You are going to go and share first, share first, mm -hmm. and then come back to this post, this Bariatric Foodie Live post, and you're going to tell me where you shared it. Like I said, one extra entry for every two places you share. So just list them out where you shared. I shared in this Facebook group, this whatever. I trust you guys. So we're going to go off of the honor system. I probably shouldn't admit that, but do share because there's a very important reason behind sharing. Participation drives the pledge. It helps me attract really good sponsors. It helps me attract really quality sponsors. So we need a lot of people to participate and a lot of people to be giving these sponsors love because they truly do make the pledge possible. The pledge is a big challenge. It takes a long time to plan. It takes a lot of manpower to run. We need the sponsors in there, not only for the prizes, but to be able to plan the back end of this. So we need lots of participants. Please do share. Mm -hmm. so we're going to go on the honor system. Whoever you said you shared it with, we're, we're, we're going to choose to believe you. Okay? Just share it. One extra entry for every two places you share it. Now, got to enter by Sunday, January 7th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is... 2.59 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't think any of us Eastern folks are going to be awake, but I wanted to give folks on the West Coast until like legit midnight their time to do that. Now, if you don't want to, for whatever reason, you don't want to use Facebook to say where you, you um, uh, shared it with people, or if you share it with somebody who themselves wants to share it for more chances, and maybe they're not on Facebook, you can also email me at Nikki at bariatricfoodie.com by that same deadline and tell me where you shared this link. But share, 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 share. Share the link, encourage people to sign up because we need big participants. Um, so that is what we're gonna do now. We're going to announce the winner on Monday on a special Surge anniversary edition of Bariatric Foodie Live. And this surge anniversary edition, I gotta like wrap things up because I think my laptop is like got 10 minutes left on it, Shannon. Um, I'm gonna go through pictures of the last 10 years. I'm gonna tell you guys what my weight has been each and every single year um, since my surgery. I am going to answer questions about, you know, what I eat now versus then, calories, struggles, the worst thing I've done since um since uh, um, oh, did she? Did we lose her? Oh man, I bet we lost her. Well, fooey. I have a feeling that we were lost.
Oh, you still see me. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, we must have gotten dropped. She must have lost her battery. Um, so, I have the link. Hold on one second. I can't type it in, but it is... Where's that link? Um, bariatricfoodie.com backslash pledge. I think is what it is. I'm very sorry about that. Um, all of the information that you need will be in the comments of the live. Yes, her battery is probably dead. Um, so I'm going to, uh, yeah, I think it did. I think that uh, her battery did die. Um, I will say that I don't get a whole lot of um, control if she loses her feed. Um, so there we go. Um, let's see, did she pop? Is she popping back on? Because we it still says live on my end. Um, yeah, my 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 stupid thing said that that I had ten minutes left and I didn't. Didn't. <laughs> we didn't I had ten minutes and left and then. Cool. The, and then I started looking at my phone and they're like, we still see you, Shannon. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Like, Why hey, well, you know, you know, and, like, you know uh, I'm since, just going to take over the show. Right. You took since over the I, show and you did a good job when you took well, over the show. Well, and once I realized that you all were still seeing me, I guess, you know, I did OK. But I don't yeah, get a lot of. I hovered over and said, you have 10 minutes. I'm like, OK, I'm going to speak fast. And then they're like a minute later. It's like. Bah. Hmm. It's a well, but you're back. You're back. Yes. So you can. You anyway, can... what was. Wait a minute. Hold up. What was the. Okay. See. Okay. Okay. Very educated. Can I highlight my email address? I put. I'm going to put all of this on the status message after we get off this live, which is going to be very soon because now I'm traumatized. You said that. I said that all the information would be available. I don't want to play it anymore. Live. <laughs> she's taking her ball and she's going home. I'm salty. <laughs> anyway, so I will have all of this information about the giveaway on um, the the status message. I will update the status message. Just the important thing to remember is to share that link, bariatricfoodie.com forward slash take the pledge. pledge. Take the pledge. Take the pledge, people. Take, take the pledge. The pledge. And I will draw a winner from Monday, who are, and five people are going to win that prize package. Yes. And like I said, I'm going to go in depth about what 10 years after uh, weight loss surgery looks like, feels like, is like, and we will discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to say... Anybody, uh, Shannon, while I was gone, I don't know if anybody had any outstanding um, questions. And I couldn't see everything. Like, I, I could see them, but they were going so fast, so I couldn't really. Last call for questions, guys. This is the last time you're going to speak to me as a nine-year post-op, okay? <laughs> like, that's like, look, Nikki, that, you, you didn't change that much. But um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We come back and we answer them. So uh, with that, I'm going to remind you one more time, the sign up for Bariatric Foodie Live updates at bariatricfoodie.com forward slash live so that you get an email to remind you when we're going live and what the topic is um, for this sh week's show. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Shannon, mm -hmm. please stay alive. Yes. I need you in my life. Okay. Gotcha. Look, the universe tried to get you, but no. Mm -hmm. I will get the. I will go. I will cut the universe right. over I Shannon. Mean, okay. As first weeks of the year go, I could have had a better one, but the, we're going up from here. Wait. I'm saying, <laughs> sign up for the pledge. Tell other people about the pledge. We're gonna do this drawing on Monday, okay, guys? Yeah. Nah.